everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we're bringing you a showdown for Kingdom Death Monster against a legendary monster called the Beast of Sorrow. Now this is a variation on the White Lion. It's considered level four, though to be fair, a lot of people do consider this level four monster easier than the standard level three White Lion. So on top of that, I'm feeling very, very confident coming into this. I have really managed to gather up a very, very powerful set of equipment, of weaponry. I do have a Twilight Sword. I'm not bringing the Twilight Sword to this fight, but I, I have a Lantern Sword. I've got the Lance of Longinus. I've got, uh, um, what is it, the, the spear that you get from the Phoenix. I've got the Finger of God. Um, and what was the other? And then, then the other one is just a, a cat eye bow, but, uh, or I'm sorry, a cat gut bow, but that person that has a cat gut bow is really my support and has a cat eye circlet, which I can use to, to really try to avoid traps and to set up the, the hit locations that I want to be hitting. So with all that in mind, the Beast of Sorrow might not be such a big deal. I'm kind of killing time before I get to the uh, Slender Man level two, which is why, uh, so I'm fighting the Beast of Sorrow here, and because I didn't have any, uh, any any survivors that I felt comfortable going up against a level two Phoenix, which is the fight I'll do after the Beast of Sorrow, assuming that this fight goes the way I hope it will. And then after that Phoenix level two, uh, which I have beaten once before, I'll then fight Slender Man level two after that. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, again, this, this might be a, a quick fight despite it being a level four monster, just kind of depending on what happens. Uh, I do want to mention we have a giveaway going on right now. This is a medium size USPS flat rate box. There are nine games in here and I'm not really telling you what games they are, but you can win these nine games. And all you gotta do is go in the description below, find how to enter the contest. Now, what nine games are in there? Like I said, I'm not telling you. Are they good games? Not all of them. <laughs> Basically what this is, is I uh, have decided that every year in January, I'm gonna look over the past year, see how many of the games in my collection I haven't played during that, during that calendar year. Um, and so this would be, I'd have to have them for a full year and during that entire year didn't play them. 30% of those games I'm going to get rid of. Uh, so this year, nine of that 30%, I decided to give away. Now I will say there are at least, I'd say two really good games in there. And then there's a couple more games that are good games. And there's uh, definitely a few games in there that I think are not good games at all, but who knows, you might like them. Obviously nine games that can fit into a flat rate box are gonna be relatively small as far as table space goes. But I think this is gonna be a fun way for me to purge my collection a little bit and also have a little bit of fun with y'all. So be sure to get in the description below and figure out how to enter that contest. Also, I do wanna mention our sponsor, Board Game Co. This is a really cool website where you can buy, sell, and trade games. They have a great selection for you to buy. Uh, they, they have a very clear value system over there for you to sell to them. And that same value system is used for you to trade with them. The value system makes it where you can tell upfront without any guesswork, okay, if I trade this game, then I can get these two or three games for it or vice versa or however you, however you're looking at it. They also can link directly into your board game geek account and see what games you have listed for trade over there that they want or what games you have listed over there that you want in trade that they have. And so they can make all of that process a lot easier and streamlined. So be sure to check out board game Co. click on the link in the description below. And that way they'll know I sent you over there without anything else. Let's get down to the table. Oh, I do want to mention one more thing. Uh, there are uh, a set of wooden player, uh, not, not really player mats, I guess they are player mats, but player boards, wooden player boards that uh, I was sent a while ago and I never ended up making a video for. They're very similar to the ones I did make a video for, which I'll put that link in the description below. But uh, these are the upgraded versions of those. So I'm gonna be making a video here very soon showing you uh, those boards. And then because I just found that I don't use uh, the, the wooden player boards very much because of the app that I use, I just don't need all that extra stuff uh, on the table, I'm gonna be giving those away as well once the current giveaway ends. So be sure to keep checking back for that player board giveaway. These are really nice boards. They're magnetized, they're really cool. Uh, so I'll be making a video here 
probably uh, end of February, beginning of March, showing those boards off and then uh, setting up the giveaway for those boards. Okay, without anything else, let's get down to the table and we're gonna hunt the Beast of Sorrow. All right, so here are our four survivors that are going on a hunt for the Beast of Sorrow, which is a level four legendary white lion. The Beast of Sorrow is all the way at the end of this hunt track down there, about as far, <clears throat> excuse me, about as far as it can get. Now, of course, normally if it went on to that, or uh, it, it, it's so close to the end there that we could end up with starvation normally. Fortunately, we do have this innovation war room which you can see it says uh let's see a dangerous room of plans and tools quarries cannot move off the hunt board if the survivors would move backwards on the hunt board roll a d10 on a four plus they don't and you can use an endeavor the hunt team makes a plan the group may re-roll one hunt event table result this lantern year this they must re-roll before performing the event so i did spend that endeavor so they have that in their back pocket and of course he can't escape and hopefully we can prevent ourselves from moving backwards throughout this hunt. Also, because I am carrying a uh, one scythe and one pickaxe, after I go through overwhelming darkness, the next space I'll have uh, herb, herb gathering and mineral gathering available to me. So I'll do both of those once we get past overwhelming darkness. Now I'll go through all of the equipment for each of our survivors once we get done with the hunt and their any other fighting arts and that sort of stuff. We'll deal with all that after we get done with the hunt. For now, just know this is uh, Daniel. Does he have a last name? I don't think he does. No, that's, so this is Daniel. We've got, uh, let's see, Isabella Mace. Here is Luke Nightkiller. And Ventras Erroneous. As far as during the hunt, I believe Daniel is the only one that has anything. He has prepared, which allows him to add his hunt experience to roll results when determining a straggler. And I don't think anybody else has anything. So we'll go ahead and move along. Now, oh, now just so you know, as far as experience goes, Daniel has 10 hunt experience and... He is by far the most experienced. Everybody else actually has zero hunt experience going into this fight. So hopefully, hopefully we can uh, work something out here. They know, several of them do have other stuff going on because of various things that have happened in the settlement. Uh, but, but again, we'll, we'll cover all that once we get into the fight. So let's start off. We'll have Ventress go here and resolve this hunt event. Sea of Golden Grass. Fields of Golden Grass lay ahead. The event revealer may choose to avoid the plains and roll twice on the hunt event table before moving on the hunt board. Otherwise, each survivor gains plus one courage and the event revealer rolls on this table. So let's see, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, if we go one or three, their core was stalking, began to shut down immediately. The monster ambushes the survivors. I mean, the ambush would be bad, but not having to go through the entire hunt uh, board would be not so bad. The survivors struggle with the tall grass, loss, we roll on the hunt event table before moving on the hunt board. All right, not terrible. You pick up the trail, choose to move the white line one space forward or backward on the hunt vent board. Yeah, we'll, we'll roll on this. Nothing super terrible could happen. I mean, the ambush will suck, but other than that. Oh, shit. Okay. So he does ambush us. So just like that, you have seen how a hunt could be incredibly short even when you're going up against a high level creature. So let's get the showdown set up. All right, so here are the stats for the Beast of Sorrow. You can see it's level four, 10 basic uh, AI cards, five advanced, one legendary, seven movement, which is a lot. Uh, I mean, there's, normally I think it's six, but that one extra movement can really make a difference. 13 toughness, plus one speed, plus one damage. Then it has these four cards here. Now, Cunning is a normal, uh, is, a, is a trait that you find with White Lions. At the end of each monster turn, the monster extends its claws. If there are any adjacent survivors, target one at random and full move the White Lion directly away from all threats, target suffers grab. 
And let's see, then we have uh, Indomitable, which is one that I think all level three monsters have. Whenever the monster attacks or is attacked, it stands at the end of that attack. The monster will not stand if a survivor is attacking a minion or another monster. If a survivor attacks during another survivor's attack, the knockdown monster will stand at the end of the new attack. So basically, the whole idea is that the, the monster is not going to stay knocked down. Like uh, other, I mean, monsters already stand up much more quickly when they're knocked down than survivors do, but now he really is just constantly standing up. Now, the interesting thing with these legendary monsters is sometimes they bring in cards from other monsters. So, for instance, Trample is a Screaming Antelope AI card. When the monster collides with a the survivor, they suffer damage equal to the monster's level at a random hit location. And keep in mind, the monster's level here is four. So every time he collides with one of my survivors, that's going to be four damage to a random hit location. And then this is a Kingsman AI card, weak spot. The monster has minus four toughness when you attack from the monster's blind spot, which is huge. So that is the one thing that really gives me hope here. Uh, let's see. And you can see that it's a white line is a type of legendary monster. We set the setup is exactly the same as the level three white lion setup. And terrain and deployment use the white lion setup as well. The, the hunt was the same as level three. And terrain and deployment is the white lion setup. And victory, if we beat him, we will use the white the level three white line victory. Plus we get one iron strange resource, and we can nominate the survivor that dealt the killing blow and they gain a random fighting art. And if we're defeated, the settlement is paralyzed by grief. No endeavors may be spent the next settlement phase. All right, so before I show you how I set the board up, let me show you that the three terrain we have. Now, tall grass is always out with the white lion. So with tall grass, it actually gives us two terrain tiles. Survivors in a space occupied by tall grass gain plus two evasion, and we can spend an endeavor I'm not an endeavor. Spend an act basically to uh, remove the priority target token from our survivor. And they're not a threat until they attack or move out of the space occupied by the tall grass. Uh, we have the giant stone face. It's an obstacle, which means it blocks line of sight. And it's impassable, so survivors cannot move through it. But impassable doesn't affect monsters. And if you spend an act, you can move onto any space occupied by giant stone face. Ranged weapons gain plus two range and plus two accuracy while atop the giant stone face and uh, survivors atop the giant stone face move normally on it and it, they ignore obstacles when drawing line of sight monsters may always draw line of sight to them and then orvain roll a d10 if carrying a pickaxe instead roll 2d10 and then add the results and you can see if we get all the way up here, 13 plus, we gain two iron. If we get four to 12, we gain one iron. All right, so here we are. We've got the, the monster here. And I mean, really, I guess he'd be facing, well, it says he ambushed us, but we still get to set him up kind of however we, however we want, I'm pretty sure. I'll double check that. Yeah, ambush doesn't affect exactly the facing of the monster, just the fact that the monster is basically going to get to take two turns in a row because we skip our first turn. And since the monster already has the first turn, and then we skip ours, and then it goes again, so it gets two turns in a row. And we've got the ore vein down here. By the way, you're going to see some uh, 3D terrain. I'll put a link in the description below where I got this from. So that's our ore vein, uh, the giant stone face over here. Uh, I don't have the 3D terrain out for it right now because I see I got people standing on the stuff out here, but when they move off, I'll put the 3D terrain out. Giant stone face with Ventress on top of it. Over here, we've got the tall grass with, uh, who is that? That's um, Luke standing on top of it. Over here, more tall grass with Daniel and, I'm sorry, that's Isabella, that's Ventress. Or do I have that backwards? No. Yeah, this is Isabella and the Ventress over here with the spear. All right, so now Daniel has two fighting arts that are going to be relevant during this fight. He's got champions right. Before making an attack, you may add your understanding to your accuracy attribute for that attack. Limit once per showdown. And clutch fighter. While you have three or more bleeding tokens, gain plus one strength and plus one accuracy. Daniel also, by the way has the spear specialization. When attacking with a spear, if you draw a trap, roll 1d10 on a seven plus, cancel the trap, discard it, then reshuffle the hit location deck into the, or hit location discard into the hit location deck and draw a new card. Limit once per round. Isabella 
has the tough fighting art. When rolling on a severe injury table, unless you roll a one, add plus one to the result. This does not include brain trauma. Luke, uh, Luke Nightkiller also has that tough ability. Luke also has the story of the goblin ability. Once per showdown, you may roll 1d10 on a 3 plus, gain the priority target token, and the monster gains plus 1 damage token. I'm not 100% sure why I would want to do that. But unless I just really want to gain the priority target token, so that I guess that would be a legitimate reason, because especially if I have some survivors that are close to death or I really want to control where the monster goes, that would be huge, actually. So that, you know, but then the, the downside, of course, is the monster is going to become much more powerful in terms of the damage it deals. Okay, I just realized something. I'd gotten Luke and Ventress mixed up. So Luke is actually going to be the one with a spear. Ventress has the sword. And so we're going to get into exactly what they've got now in terms of their, their gear. But that means that Luke, uh, Luke actually... Is uh, a, has a Twilight Sword specialization, but but he's not carrying the Twilight Sword yet because somebody else has that. And I'll explain. Uh, basically, Luke is the son of the guy with the Twilight Sword, and so that's how he inherited some specialization for that. Uh, and then he'll ca start carrying this, the Twilight Sword once that guy retires or is killed. Or I guess not killed because if he's killed, the Twilight Sword goes away. But if he retires, then uh, Luke will inherit the Twilight Sword. Uh, so right now though he's carrying the spear because uh, we want to make sure that we can keep our distance from the white lion since it has that cunning ability from or from the beast of sorrow. I mean, uh, Ventress meanwhile does have the sword specialization, and you can see with the sword specialization when attacking with a sword after drawing hit locations, make a wound attempt and then select a hit location to resolve with that result. So basically, you get to see what your wound attempt does before figuring out which wound or which hit location you're going to wound or potentially not wound. And you can see you can use that once per attack. And then I did forget to mention that Isabella has the bow specialization. When attacking with a bow, you may reroll any misses once, limit once per attack. All right, so here is Daniel. Now his primary weapon is gonna be the Lance of Longinus. Uh, it's irreplaceable, has reached to each showdown. The first time you wound the monster, uh, the first time you wound, the monster gains minus one toughness. Two accuracy, six plus, uh, or I'm sorry, two speed, six plus accuracy, nine strength. Screaming skirt, thick protective fur protects your parts. Add plus one to severe waste injury roll results. Try to canthus when you depart, gain plus two survival. When you survive a severe injury, ignore it and archive this card instead. Uh, screaming horns, I can use an axe to scream. Non-deaf, insane survivors gain plus one movement until the end of the round. All other survivors gain plus one insanity. Screaming leg warmers on arrival. Your feet hurt, gain plus three insanity. So let's go ahead and add that since we are now arriving. This app I use, by the way, is called the Scribe app for Kingdom Death. I absolutely love this thing. So he gets plus three insanity. You can see he's already very, very insane. Okay. Uh, screaming bracers on arrival, if possible, add an acanthus plant terrain card to the showdown. When you activate terrain, you may add plus two to your roll result. So we will add this to the terrain uh, on the board. Acanthus plant, uh, use an act to roll a d10. If you have a sickle, instead roll two d10 and add the results. And then you can uh, possibly have something bite your arm, find nothing, find something tasty and consume it to gain plus one survival, and then gain one fresh acanthus strange resource. Uh, let's see, Hunter Whip. So uh, three speed, six plus accuracy, three strength. And I do have the two connections here. So on a perfect hit, Discard one mood in play. The white line is known to have uh, a decent number of moods possible, so having this could be very useful. Lucky Charm, two, uh, two blue affinities, which I have, uh, obviously three blue affinities, plus one luck. And then Screaming Coat, Slam. Spend a movement to full move forward in a straight line. If you move four plus spaces and stop adjacent to the monster, it suffers knockback one and minus one toughness until the end of the round. 
And of course, he does have a full set of Screaming Armor. So we got two to all hit locations and Skewer. After you slam, spend a act to move one space and activate a melee weapon with plus two strength. If you wound with a spear, apply that wound roll result to the next selected hit location in this attack. All right, so now here is Ventress, uh, who also has the full set of Screaming Armor, so I won't go through all that. Uh, but then in addition, she has the Lantern Sword, three speed, five plus accuracy, and three uh, strength. Oh, and I do need to add plus three insanity to her as well. So here we go. Okay. Let's see. Try to Canthus. We know what that does. Moss agrees. She has plus one evasion. We don't have enough affinities for that additional evasion. And then Monster Tooth Necklace, plus one strength. And then we do have two red affinities, so she gets an additional plus one strength, which puts her at five strength total. And yeah, everything else you've seen already. But So that's what Ventress has going for. Right here we've got Luke, the leather cuirass, the leather skirt, leather bracers. We need to part game plus two survival. Leather mask, we need to part game plus two insanity. Round leather shield, one speed, eight plus accuracy, one strength if I were to hit with it. Uh, add one to all hit locations. Block, spend one act to ignore one hit the next time you are attacked. Last until your next act, you cannot use block more than once per attack. This right here is Dratocanthus. There's just not enough for me to have each person actually have a card, but that's what that uh, blank or that uh, flipped over organ grinder card is. Here we've got the Finger of God. Uh, two speed, five plus accuracy, five strength, and, oh, it has reached two, and as long as you have five plus survival, which Luke has five survival, so I might have to kind of avoid using survival with him for a little while. Gain uh, plus one accuracy and plus one strength. Leather boots. We don't have this to, you know, for, we, we're not able to trigger that right now. We don't have these two connections made uh, because I thought this connection would be more important uh, to make sure we were able to use the finger of God to its maximum potential. And the bone sickle after the hunt phase. Well, obviously that's what we used back during the hunt phase, but we didn't get to get to it, so it didn't matter. Uh, and then the leather armor provides uh, one to all hit locations, and he ignores bash, which means he's going to be a lot less likely to get knocked down. All right, so rawhide headband. Because of this connection here, I can reveal the top two cards of the AI deck and place them back on top in any order. Draw to Canthus, we've seen that. Rawhide boots, we need to part game plus one survival. Rawhide vest, because of this connection, plus one evasion. Rawhide gloves, we need to part game plus one survival. Bone pickaxe, uh, that's where we were able to put the mineral gathering onto the uh, hunt event or the hunt track. Cat gut bow, two, uh, two speed, seven plus, three strength. It is cumbersome, which means that I can't move and, or I have to be able to spend a movement and a act to use it. it does have six range. Aim, when you attack, before rolling to hit, you may reduce the speed of this weapon by one to gain plus two accuracy for that attack. Lantern Mail, that's a special except five armor. And then Cat Eye Circlet, reveal the next three monster hit locations and put them back in any order. All right, so I made a slight adjustment to my setup here since the fight hasn't actually started yet. Uh, Isabel is going to be over here, and I moved the uh, the ore, what was it, the ore vein right here. That way her very first thing she does can be to collect that, because that's going to be potentially some iron, which is very, very important and difficult to get often. Uh, now my acanthus plants are here. You can see here's the 3D terrain uh, for the acanthus plant that they, these you build and I kind of messed up with the glue there. That's why you got that kind of weird bubbly thing going on there. Um, and then I haven't completed painting and uh, attaching the acanthus to these other ones, but uh, that's uh, acanthus plant here, here, and here because I had two people with the screaming bracers. So I got to get two sets of acanthus plants and they come in sets of two. But now I think we're ready to get the fight started. All right, so this guy is going to ambush us, meaning he's going to get two AI cards in a row. So let's see what our first one is. We've got Claw, closest threat facing in range. Well, there's nobody uh, facing that's anything in front of him here. 
So then we've got closest thread in field of view. All right, well, they're all six spaces away. Let's make sure one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so they're, they're all six spaces away, so they're all the closest, so we gotta randomize it. All right, so let's bring this in. Oops. All right, so we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, oh, going after our bow. Isabella Mace, she is our least armored. So we might need to, she might need to use her survivor off the bat here to dash. I think she's probably going to do that. Uh, what's his movement? He has seven, seven movement. Okay, so yeah, she's going to, right, right away. We're, oops, we're going to use our survival to, oops, come on, click. There we go. All right, she's going to dash, and we'll go in and have her dash right down one, two, three, four, five, next to that or because she's got a pickaxe anyway, so she'll be able to deal with that. But now he's coming after her, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, put him there. All right, just double check and make sure there's nothing else that happens with the monster. I don't think so. Okay. All right, so now he gets his second turn. Chomp, pick target, closest threat, facing in range. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we'll say one through five, six through ten. All right, going after Ventress. So one, two, three. I'll do it like that. And so it's going to be one speed, but he does have plus one speed. So it's two speed, two plus accuracy. Now Ventress has three evasion, so that's five plus. And being in the grass gives her two additional evasions, so it's seven plus. So pretty good shot here, not getting hit. Uh, let's see what we've got going on here. They both miss. Fantastic. There we go. So actually pretty good opening for my guys here. So who do we want to attack first? Oh, wait, no, not a good opening. Hold on. Hold on. Right after... I should have had her dodge any or dash anyway. And we're going to have her dash because of this cunning trait. If there are any days of survivors target one at random and full move the white, with the white lion directly away from all threats and target suffers grab. We definitely don't want that to happen. So we will go ahead now after his attack. It actually does make sense to have waited. After his attack, survival, we're going to use that to dash. We're only going to dash a little ways. One, two. Just there for the moment. Okay, so now nobody's next to him, so cunning doesn't happen. All right, so we're good. All right, so I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and have her go and try to collect this ore. So Isabella has the, the scythe. I'm oh, sorry, the pickaxe, which means she'll roll 2d10. So that's 16. So 13 plus. Find a great hall. Get two iron strange resources and archive this terrain. Fantastic. Okay, so we survived his first two attacks there. Got some iron. Now let's finally start sticking it to him. All right, so first thing we definitely want to try to do is get the Lance of Longinus to get a wound because then there'll be minus one toughness for the rest of the fight. So Daniel, one, two, three, four. Actually, there's no reason for him to even get in the blind spot. No reason for him to be next to him because Daniel has five strength. The Lance has nine. That's 14 right there. 
Well, granted, though, getting the blind spot actually increases. Well, it increases the accuracy, uh, but really with this guy, that's his weak spot, so it gives him minus four toughness. So that's one of the main reasons to get a blind spot with him. But I think in this case, we can be this far back. We have enough strength to pretty much auto wound him unless we roll a one. And with the accuracy, let's see, Daniel doesn't have any additional accuracy. The Lance is six plus two speed. I think I think it's I think it's worth it. So all right, so here we go. We need uh, six plus. Oh wait, hold on. First, no, no, no. Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, six plus. Okay, one of them hits. Got the glorious main. All right, it's impervious, so no wound here. Uh, we could get the critical though, uh, which would give us the shimmering main white line resource. All right, so to get a crit, uh, we need a. 10, he has one luck, so nine or better. Not good enough. All right, so nothing happens. Now, one thing I've forgotten is I do want to use her cat eye circle. She's going to surge again. Or not again, she's going to surge. So it's going to take another for survival. All right, and let's look at the top three. Hit locations. So we got the Strange Hand, Beast Maw, and Beast Temple. They all have failure, basic action failure. Roll one, two, ten. one brain damage per monster level. That's pretty rough. Failure. So basic action. Okay. Um, we'll do it like that. Now, I think with the Lance, I think with Daniel, we'll go ahead and surge now. Because like I said, we really want that Lance to get its first wound on him. All right, so again, we need six plus. All right, one more hit. All right, and so we've got the Beast Temple. All right, so if we fail to wound, but again, anything other than a one will be a wound, and a nine or higher will be a crit. Whoa, we got a two. All right, so we did get the wound. Um, so let's see. So we got the wound, so that we're going to move the one AI card to the wound stack, and we're going to take that. Now, again, that's going to be a what, minus one toughness token. Yep. All right, so now that we got that done, Let's try to focus on getting some of this acanthus real quick, if we can. All right, so up here, we've got Luke, and he'll go ahead and try to get the, who, wait, who has the scythe? Yeah, Luke. That's, so that's who's going to be getting the acanthus for now. Uh, let's see, let's see. The acanthus, roll 1d10. If you have a sickle, it's called a sickle, not a scythe. Roll 2d10. Nine. One fresh acanthus, strange resource. Fantastic. So, by the way, fresh acanthus is great to have during the fight. Archive this to fully heal one hit location, including injury levels and armor points. So that works out pretty well. And who we say? Oh yeah, there we go. So now we'll have him move one, two, three, four, five. Should I grab that acanthus next? So now let's have one, two, three. That is the Lantern Sword. So Ventress does not have any speed. So the Lantern Sword is three speed, five plus accuracy. She has one accuracy, so that's four plus. And she's in the blind spot, so that's three plus accuracy. All three of them hit. We do have a perfect hit. Don't think anybody has anything that helps with perfect hits. But all three of these hit, all right? All right, so we've got the beast knee. No reaction there, so that's good. And these two obviously have reactions. Okay, so 
minus four toughness for the blind spot, minus one toughness, minus five toughness. So that puts the Beast of Sorrow at eight toughness. Ventress has five strength. The Lantern Sword has three strength. So anything other than a one. The Lantern Sword does have this ability where you can roll, where when it hits, you have to roll to add additional strength. But there's no reason to do that because she's already at as good as it can get. All right, so let's go. We'll do the Beast Knee first. Again, anything other than a one. And... For crits, she doesn't have any luck, so ten, only 10s. All right, so that is a wound. All right, now we'll do the strange hand. A four, that's a wound, okay. And the beast maul. A wound. All right, easy enough. She could go again. We'll be getting real deep in, into the hit location deck without knowing what's coming, though. So I think instead she's just going to use her survival to uh, dash away and one two three into the grass that's what we'll do all right so now we get back around to the white lion we've got grasp uh closest knockdown survivor range nobody's knocked down closest survivor in range well that is definitely oh wait she Sorry, she was still adjacent there, so that's where she'll go. So she's not adjacent. So we don't get the uh, the cunning trait triggered. All right, so grasp. Uh, so, yeah, closest survivor in range, so definitely going to be her. Well, actually, he's also in range and just as close. Yeah, so we'll say one through five, six through ten. Okay, so it is going to be her. So now, move an attack. So just go right there. Now again, Ventress has three evasion plus the two for being in the, the grass there. So that puts this accuracy at seven plus two speed. One of them does hit. It's gonna be her leg. Now she has five armor there. Uh, let's see, the... Beast of Sorrow only has plus one damage, so that would be two damage total. But then after damage, the White Lion or the Beast of Sorrow isolates its prey, full move the Beast of Sorrow away from all threats. Target suffers grab. Yeah, so we're going to, we're definitely going to dodge that. So that knocks our survival down to four. So let's start off with Luke over here collecting some more. Hopefully some more, uh, what's it called? Acanthus. He rolled a 10. So, yep, we get fresh Acanthus again. And he's going to move one. Now, when he steps there, he's going to pass off one of these fresh Acanthuses to Daniel. And then two, three, four, five. Or five, I guess. Okay. All right. And now... Danyo will attack. Oh my gosh, I just realized something. Cunning works at the end of each monster turn, not at the end of each, not at the end of each survivor turn. So hold on. So she would have to dodge here or dash here. And I mean, that means I wasted some dashes earlier. That's all right. All right. So that means Ventress is going to be down to just three survival now, which does make me a little bit nervous. But so she would have dashed, we'll say one, two, three, four to there. So she's not adjacent anymore. Now let's see. Let's have our, let's have Isabella fire her. Well, actually, you know, she's going to use her cat eye circlet. That's what she'll do. To look at the next three hit locations. Okay. Beast Femur, no reaction. So definitely put that on top. Uh, two failure reactions for these two, both of which have the beast, the, the beast of sorrow running away. So we'll 
do it like that. And then she'll go one, two, three. Uh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So now, Daniel using the spear, it has reach. He's going to attack the white lion. Again, not technically in the blind spot, so he doesn't get that bonus, but uh, where are we at? So six plus on the accuracy. Two hits. So definitely do this one first with no reaction. And again, anything other than a one. Oh, and that's a crit because Daniel has one luck. So here we go on the Beast Femur. You bruise the Beast of Sorrow's Femur, crippling its graceful movement. The Beast of Sorrow gains minus one movement token, and I gain one random resource. One random white lion resource. So the resource, the Lion Claw, Razor Sharp Retractable Claw. And so he's got minus one movement, which puts him back down to six movement, which is the normal amount for a white lion. All right, and now we got to do the beast back. So again, anything other than a one. We got a two. That's pretty close, but it is just, it's a two, so we're fine. Let's have Daniel surge. He has a spear specialty, which allows him to potentially deal with a trap. We've still got a lot of room in this, in this hit location deck, and... We know one of the things, the one of the next things coming up is not a trap. All right, so Daniel's sur uh, surging. So six plus. Nope. Uh, yeah, six plus. Two more hits. All right. So the beast scapular deltoid, as we already knew, and. The beast heal. All right, we'll definitely go with the heal first since there's no reaction. And we got a wound. And for the scapular deltoid, a wound. Okay. Now, let's have... Isabella surge again, or surge, she hasn't surged this round yet, so have her surge. And use the cat eye circlet again. All right, so here we go. We've got, is that three? Yeah, okay. All right, so here we go. This one has no reaction, so that's good. So that's on top for sure. Wound reaction. Uh, Prairie target versus this is a failure reaction. Um, failure is so unlikely. Let's we'll leave that one on top for now. All right, so now here comes Ventress, and she is going to attack right there. So again, we're looking at four plus with three speed. Oh, she, that's right. She has one accuracy, so three plus. All right. Everything hits. So we know what these three are. And like I said, we'll do it in the order that we set them up in. And uh, again, one plus. Whew, that was close, but it counts. So the soft belly takes a wound. And again, very close, but it counts. The beast's ear takes a wound. And now finally for the beast's flank. Oh, so close to a crit, but she doesn't have any luck. Uh, but it is a wound. So the wound happens. And now though, you can see the wound reaction. Cats hate this. The monster is very upset. Attacker gains the priority target token. The question is, do I risk surging and risk grabbing a trap? 
But here's the thing. We have been so successful at this point with the Beast of Sorrow. It only has five AI cards left. That means six life total. I say we risk it. We go ahead and go. So Ventress only has three survival, but she is going to use that to surge. All right, so three plus. Ooh, one of them actually missed. So only two hits. <sighs> well, there we go. I got greedy. So there's the trap, all right? So the attacker is caught in the white lion, in the, in the beast of sorrow's ruse and is savagely mauled. The attacker is doomed, meaning she cannot use... Uh, um, Survival for this for the trap perform basic action target the attacker So the basic action is gonna have let's see first off white line turns around now The cool thing is now that the attacker has been targeted the priority target token goes away White lion basic action has two speed Well, this one has plus one so three speed Accuracy is two plus. She has one, three, she has three evasion, so five plus. Two of them hit. Each of those hits is gonna cause two damage. Oh, so four total to the waist. All right, well, she's got six, so she's down to two. Not awful. And that means we've got the, the trap. We know that it's come out. We're shuffling back in the deck. Hopefully, it goes somewhere near the bottom this time. I mean, that time we got pretty deep into the deck without too much of a problem. All right, so has everybody gone? They both attacked twice now. Yeah, we're good. All right, so now White Lion or Beast of Sorrow's turn. Oh, it's a legendary card. Oh, boy. White Lion gains plus one speed and plus two accuracy okay when a survivor attacks the monster they suffer three brain damage unless they are in the monster's blind spot a survivor with six plus understanding may ignore this brain damage by averting their eyes if they do they suffer minus four accuracy instead if a monster is killed with golden eyes in play up to two survivors may consume the eyes each gains plus one permanent accuracy that's pretty cool all right, so does anybody have six understanding? Ventress does not. Nope. Nope. All right, so Daniel could use that if he wanted to. We'll see. But right now, oh, that's the end of the monsters. It doesn't say to draw anything. Okay. Okay. So that actually, we might be able to kill him now. That might work in our favor. If he had pulled, if he had drawn that card at the beginning of the match, that could have maybe changed a couple things. But I mean, we've been using our our survival pretty liberally, so maybe not. I don't know. Regardless, right now, I don't think he's going to do too much for him. First things first. This guy's coming down here and harvesting that twelve. So we get a canthus, fresh acanthus. Now. She will, yes. So she'll go ahead and use the cat eye circle it. Wow, look at that at the top of the deck. That is not good. All right, so here's what we'll do. So, oh, wait, 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 hold on. Real quick. She needed to dodge, or not dodge. She needed to uh, dash at the end of the monster's turn. Uh, Ventress, that's who it is. So we'll have had her go one, two, three, four. Yeah. Now, Danio has 21 insanity. So he's not super worried about this whole business with the golden eyes. He's going to start working his way towards the, uh, the rear of the cat here, but he's still going to attack. One, two, three... Four, five. He'll go there. 
And so now he's not adjacent. He's got the spear. He's going to attack. He's going to take the three brain damage. Everybody else does not have that level of insanity, so they're, they're going to be a little more careful. He's taking three brain damage. He's attacking six plus, right? Yes. Yep, no extra accuracy. So six plus. One hit. Okay. Uh, okay, so... Uh, and let's see, his... Yeah, so he's good on the strength. So here we go. Anything but a one. A two. We've been rolling a lot of twos today. All right, so that is a wound. Now, Daniel's going to go ahead and go again because he has the spear. He's able to cope with, potentially cope with a trap. So let's let's try him one more time here. Again, six plus. Only one hit, so he's not going to hit the trap. That was him surging, by the way. Sorry. FYI, let's go ahead and... All right, so we've got the beast's elbow. Again, anything but a one. There we go, that's a wound. So the beast is down to two AI cards, both of which are basic. Because I know that because I just had to reshuffle his AI deck. So I'm thinking that it might be worth it to, to wait, not do anything, let the beast make an attack. Okay, so yeah, here, yeah, this is what we're going to do. We are going to, Daniel will dash, because he's already moved, so he's going to dash to get into the grass here. One, two, three, and Ventress is going to move one, two, three, four, five into the grass. Yeah, and then we're going to let the, the lion attack. Okay. There we go. Claw, closest threat facing in range. So facing is all of them. Closest threat, one, two, three, four. Oh, no. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it's either Ventress or Isabella. We'll say one through five, six through ten. Okay, going after Ventress. That's what I would prefer. Because Isabella, like I said, has a lot less armor than everybody else. Um all right, so we've got, she's not going to use, she, she's not too worried about it. She's not going to use her her uh, survival to dash, at least not yet. Maybe, maybe at the end, yeah, at the end to avoid, that's, she'll use it at the end to avoid cunning. That's what she'll do. Okay, so uh, it's going to be attack with two speed. Actually, though, that's going to be four speed now. So lion moves, one, two, three. Three. Okay. Four speed. Whoa, whoa, what was the accuracy? It's two plus. Four plus for the grass. Ventress has three evasion. Seven plus. Three of them hit. Oh my goodness. There's three eights here. Okay. Um, and... So then normally it has one damage, but the lion has pl only plus one damage. So it's two damage to each of these. Let's see where they're going to hit. Are you kidding me? Six damage to the body. Well, Ventress has five armor. So all of that is gone. And she took a light wound. That was about as targeted as this AI will ever get. That was unbelievable. Okay, so now she will 100% use her last survival to go one, two, three, four, five. That was a, a dash. Back to our turn. I don't even think we use Cat Eye Circlet yet. I think we, because the, the, at best we can put it three cards down, but we need to wound him three times. So we're going to let Daniel try to deal with it with his spear. All right. So from the grass, he's able to, because uh, of reach two. So again, six plus. One, one wound. All right. But that's all. Or one hit. I'm sorry. Uh, there's the trap. All right. So now with the spear specialization 
When attacking with a spear, if you draw a trap, roll a d10. On a 7+, plus, cancel the trap. All right, so 7+. plus. Here we go. Oh, no. Not quite. Not quite. Okay. So he's going to get hit with a trap. Not too bad. Daniel's got a lot of armor, so we're fine there. So the... What is it? The uh, the basic action. All right. So it's going to be four speed. And two plus accuracy. Daniel has one evasion, three plus, five plus because of the grass. So two of them miss. That's good. Two of them hit. All right. These two hit. So they hit the body and legs. They each do two damage. Yep. So not too bad at all. So now this is going to get reshuffled back in. And again, hopefully somewhere near the bottom rather than three cards down from the top. All right. So now. Oh, you know what? When Daniel did that attack, he needed to take three brain damage. So one, two, three. All right. So now. Let's go. Let, well, you know what? We'll we will use. Um, okay, hold. On. Well, I guess Daniel has to finish his turn actually before Isabella. Isabella could surge here. Yeah, let's have Isabella surge. Use the cat eye circlet. All right, so that has no uh, no reaction, failure, and reflex. So we'll do them in that order. Daniel is going to go one, two, three, four. And now he will surge. So five plus because he is in the blind spot this time. Still two speed. They both missed. That's unbelievable. Okay. All right. So it's going to be up to, up to Ventress. Uh, she, okay, so she's got, she's a blind spot. She has one accuracy. Three plus. One misses, two hit. Straining neck first. Anything but a one. <gasps> okay, we got a crit. Okay, check this out. Straining neck is really cool. So if you crit, well, first let's make sure we move the AI card so we don't forget that. Okay. So now roll a D10 again on this table and see what happens. Most likely we're just gonna knock it down. If I roll a 10 again, it's an instant kill for the, mo for the monster. Like, so, you, so really, you could kill the monster on the very first turn if you manage to draw a straining neck, then roll a 10, or then roll a crit, and then roll a 10 plus after that. So, all right, here we go. Okay, so monster's knocked down. Now, of course, with the Beast of Sorrow, the Beast of Sorrow has Indomitable, so whenever the monster attacks or is attacked, it stands at the end of that attack. All right. So on the next attack, it'll stand up. But always cool. I've actually never seen this kill, kill the white lion, but I keep waiting for the day. One day. We do still have this wound here. So let's see. All right. All right. So that's a wound. All right. So we need one more wound to kill the monster. Now, my question is, does it stand up now because it's still it was still in the process of being attacked? And I'm going to say yes. Indomitable seems pretty awful. I'm going to say because an attack was still ongoing, um, it would stand. I could be wrong, but we're I'd rather err on the side of making it a little bit more difficult than easier, especially because the way this is going right now with the gear I've got, the Beast of Sorrow is has not had much of a chance. She's going to surge. Oh, she can't surge. She has no... Oh, no. So he has one health left. Um, one, two, three, four, five. And she's going to fire her bow. Could Isabella get the kill shot? Okay. So the bow... Oh, wait, 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 wait. She can't... So when she... That movement there was her dashing, all right? Because she has to use her movement to be able to fire the bow. Because remember when we used a cat eye circle earlier, that was, a, that was a surge. All right, so she dashed to get there. Now she's attacking. Uh, two speed. 
Seven plus accuracy. All right, here we go. Nice. Two hits. Doesn't really matter because if we wound, well, that's not true. It does matter uh, because if we fail to wound, then which one do we prefer? This one because nobody will get hurt. Three strength on the bow. She has three strength. That's six. Monster has minus one toughness, so six or better is what we need to wound. Ah, two. All right, so the monster full moves in a straight line. Now, the cool thing is, since she, I feel like this one, it's already hit, right? Or no, that, no, no, because look, it says... Cancel all hits now out of range. Definitely out of range. Okay. All right. That was a good, good try. He is going to get one more go at us. Luke over here is going to try to collect that last one. So he's going to spend one survival to dash. One, two, three, four, five. That way, on the next turn, he can get to it. All right. So the white lion has nothing left but his basic attack. So closest survivor in field of view Either of these two, so one through five, six through ten. So he's coming after Daniel. He only has six movement, though. One, two, three, four, five, but it is enough. Uh-oh. That's not good. Oh, but you know what? A beginning of a turn, it, it goes uh, monster, then survivor. So that means that all of their... Uh, their survival actions are available to be used again. So after this attack finishes, then I'll be able to surge. So four plus, or I'm sorry, four speed, two plus, three plus because one evasion from Daniel. So one misses, three hit. Head, body, body, two damage each. Uh, he can take all that, so. Okay, and then two to the head. Okay, don't want to take too much more like that, though. Now, before the monster's turn ends, before it takes off with, you know, for the cunning deal, uh, Daniel is going to surge and attack. So... He's going to take that three hit to his insanity. I've already knocked the survival off, but then he takes one, two, three. All right, so two, six plus. All right, we got one. We got one hit, beast elbow, anything but a one. Good, there we go. It is dead. Okay, so we have uh, the victory conditions here. We're going to use the, the level three white lion victory plus one strange uh, iron strange resource. So let's go and grab that. All right, so there's the iron. Nominate this survivor that dealt with killing blow. That survivor gains a random fighting art. So that was Danyo. All right, so... Let's say just a random fighting art. Mammoth hunting. All right. Well, Daniel is a spearman out of swordsman, so we can get rid of swordsman's promise. Mammoth hunting. Gain plus one strength when attacking from adjacent spaces outside the monster spacing and blind spot. All right. So now let's go over to the. Oh, well, let's not forget about this. If a monster is killed with golden eyes in play, up to two survivors may consume the eyes. Each gains plus one accuracy. So here's the thing. Daniel is so far along in his experience, he's going to be retiring soon. So I'm not going to give that to him. Instead, Luke is going to be using the Twilight Sword. Is he the one with the Twilight Sword coming up soon? I think so. He has the... Yeah, so he's going to be my Twilight Sword guy uh, uh, when the when the current one retires. 
So I will give him plus one accuracy. And Ventress plus one accuracy. So now everybody gets two hunt experience. So Ventress is going to age. Luke will age. Isabella will age. And Dania will not. So let's do that aging real quick. All right, so you may select a, the, your weapon proficiency. Well, all of them already have it because they all are children of someone. So we don't have to worry about that. So really, the, the 2d10 here is the main thing we're doing. Because I believe, let me just make sure. Yeah, so Isabella's the bow. He's the twilight sword. And... Uh, Ventress is a sword. Okay. So instead, roll 2d10 and get the result. So 11 for Ventress and one random fighting art. Oops. Random. Orator of Death. Once per showdown, you may spend... An act to have all non-deaf survivors gain plus two insanity. When you die, you encourage all survivors with your last words. All right, so Luke got a 10. I believe that's also, yep, random fighting art. Trailblazer, the hunting party, may start the hunt one space closer to the monster. At the start of the showdown, all survivors gain plus one survival and up to plus one insanity. And then Isabella. Five plus one strength. Okay. Okay. Plus one weapon proficiency level, assuming, of course, that they actually wounded. Now, I know Isabella attempted to, did not. Well, let's go back. Daniel definitely did. Getting close to mastery. Luke didn't. He doesn't have his Twilight Sword, so Inventress definitely did as well. Okay. And then Rewards. So we're going to get four basic resources. So we've got Monster Hide, the skin of a beast. More Monster Hide. Something we're not sure. You have no idea what monster bit this. You have no idea what monster bit this can be used as a bone, organ, or hide. Yep. And Monster Organ. If you consume this, archive this card, roll 1d10 on a result of 6 plus, you can track the Parasite. Archive all consumable gear in your gear grid. And then what does it say? Eight white lion resources. Golden whiskers. Fantastic. These whiskers are tough. White fur. Luxurious and soft to the touch. Lion claw. Lion claw. Eye of the cat. Awesome. A perfectly preserved eye. Great Cat Bones, strong and surprisingly light. That puts us at six. Lion Testes, a hefty pair of nuts, and Great Cat Bones. And then we get the Elder Cat Teeth Strange Resource. As sharp as they are strange. If we had Saga, we'd get this, but unfortunately we don't have Saga yet. So there you go. That was a very quick fight with the Beast of Sorrow. As I thought, I was able to get in there and really kind of handle business with him. Had a couple of moments where he started to fight back a little bit, but he just wasn't able to get anything going. And I managed to uh, pretty handily beat him. Uh, I think this is the second time that I've successfully won when I've filmed uh, a Kingdom Death video. A lot of times these fights look like they're going my way and then they take a hard left turn and I get uh, TPK'd. I think uh, 
there's been at least two TPKs that have, have been here on the channel. So be sure to check those videos out as well. I'll kind of link them in the, the cards for the video and stuff. Like I said, be sure to check out Board Game Co. Be sure to enter that contest. If you um, have any questions at all uh, about this game, be sure to leave in the comments below. Be sure to reach out with any other questions or comments. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.